Hey, this is 5 a.m. Master Scrum. Early in the morning, East Coast time, 5 a.m. Hopefully get it out and we'll be a scrum in 15 minutes. Give a little bit of what a daily scrum might be like. One or two topics on scrum or agile thought processes that I want to introduce to you. And that'll be it. Something you can take for your day. And today I'm doing my first recording just to play around between what my laptop would give me and what would my phone give me. And I can look at different ones. Ooh, 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 ooh. Just mess around. Anyway, so today, what do I have to do? So what I usually do in the morning is I do look at what my schedule is going to be with my customer, all my teams I'm coaching, and my enterprise activities, and the plan my day. I write it in a little book, like a daily planner, and in there I give myself, I go through all my meetings in the day, and which I'm going to be at today, and today I have a busy day, like always, and if I look at my company computer, I have my own laptop, my own company. I got a couple due days. Today's the end of a sprint, so today will be a bunch of meetings with teams that are closing their sprint. And I like to look at how their velocity went, um, attend any demos they're doing this week, because um, they have multiple teams I'm like, coaching at the same time. Can't be in all of them, but every other sprint I go to them. And I got a couple projects that I got to deliver today, and I got to get it finished. So it's a balance between the two. And. Uh, What's pre for my own personal projects, what's preventing me from getting them? One, started this project today and recording what I'm doing for the uh, 5 a.m. Master Scrum. Let's give it a shot, see how it works. So, woohoo, we're getting there. Um, also, so one of my other things I have in my whip, so I'm going to go through my whip for my own personal projects. One, I'm working on a, uh, a new museum coming here to Philadelphia and my aspect of doing it I have to fill out the business materials and everything so I can let my other team who I'm blocking from going out and getting money and pursuing other things and getting more volunteers and just roaming up the, the conversation gotta make sure I got a 5013C so that's the task that I have to go on, on. And what's blocking me is all these other tangents and not managing my whip very well. So that and overpromising. Never heard of that before, have you? No, no. No one overpromises. Um, so I've just got to manage my whip very well, and part of this video process is doing that. And uh, the other thing I got to work on um, is finish up my kids' room. So I got some work I got to do, so I'm balancing when I get home doing that. And I think today I should be home early enough to finish working on his, his house, his room. Anyway, so just talking daily scrum. Just wrote a blog post about daily scrum not having to be a hawk. And one of the things I started doing was inserting a scrum story-like phrasing in my presentations. And in other places as I write stuff emails, things like that. And the reason why I'm doing that is to get management and other people seeing that the story format works and how they justify what they're doing. So that's one of the things I've been doing lately and putting in there about using metrics and, you know, management, um, management wants the data in a system updated so that they can provide reporting on their quarterly reports on, on who's got what done and how, how well they're progressing. You know, just a, as a manager, I want or need um, to have updated information so that I can do reports without asking for a bunch of statuses and spend more time looking for information and asking everybody, what's your status? Classic. Anyway. So that's one of the things we, we got going on. Um, 
and that I want to take the point when you're when you're writing your reports as a scrum master, an agile coach, or anything. Try to think of ways you can incorporate um, agile thought processes in what you're doing, and and look at those four main areas of being agile and applying them to whatever you present. So not only are you trying to move the needle, you're subtly um, providing that information. One other item that um, I wanted to talk about was moving, sacrificing whatever you are as a, as a coach. And one of the things I had a, a one of my coaches wanted to get closer to one of the teams. And, you know, you talk about servant leader, and I got to bring up to my boss switching desks because it'll get that person who's a scrum master closer to their new team, and I'll have to switch and be at another floor somewhere else in the building. But that's fine. I know I want to be in with the teams and hear every day what's going on, but it's more valuable to the organization to have the scrum master who's there every day with the team in that environment. So it makes a lot of sense to switch. But without having my weekly, couple times a week, one-on-ones um, -on with key people like scrum masters, you don't, these things don't pop up. It doesn't necessarily read, but when you have a conversation and then you say, hmm, well, it makes more sense for you to be where I'm sitting and me sitting where your, where your desk is and I just grab my laptop and just jump in the teams because I got five teams anyhow so I just go from desk to desk and team to team and see how they're doing and getting into the world so maybe it makes sense something I didn't think about um, always change always new ideas on how to make the teams operate better and as a transformation as a coach it's what you really want to do you want to get the teams functioning better than than they did before and if you have to sacrifice your desk or move around then so be it it's what we do i'm trying to make them better anyway just thoughts um two of them just want to pick two two, two on this session and keep everything to 15 minutes so i'm going to stop recording and see how it went and this is episode one. Subscribe to us. Hit the button. And I won't have my washer dryer in the background. And I'll have better lighting. And that's one of my next things to work on is doing the video recording. And how would it work without the laundry in the back of the video? But it's 5 a.m. Can't think of everything. But you can plan and prep and one day I will clean my office up so we could do this in the office and not in the kitchen with the washer dryer in the background. Anyway, take care. Thanks and happy scrumming.